Have you ever been soaring in your business, feeling like you're rocking it, things are going well, and then scratch, it goes, like it stops, like a screeching halt. And you're wondering, what happened? Why am I here? And more importantly, what do I do now? I've been there. I bet you're, you've been there and you might even be there right now. And today we're going to talk about what to do when nothing seems to be working. You're doing all the things I say to do, and it's just not producing the team members. It's just not producing the sales. You're just not getting the volume. And it is just frustrating. We're going to break it down and I'm going to give you what I have done and what my, my clients do to get past that moment when it, nothing seems to be working. We'll be right back. Happy holidays. You know, I can't help myself. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. You might be thinking, Roxanne, it's too soon, but the truth is, I'll stop singing, that if you are a network marketer, and odds are you are because that's why you listen to this podcast, it is not about when the holiday season officially starts. In fact, in order to have a great holiday season as a network marketer, as a business owner, you must, you must, you must start working on it early. In fact, now would be good if you haven't already. And that is why I created Slay Your Sales. It's for you, network marketers. It's your guide and your strategy to how to do the holiday season. What I love about this moment with you and my ability to, to get you going is that you're not only going to get the, the blueprint that I personally have used in network marketing, but my clients have used over the last few years and they're seeing growth year after year after year by using this strategy, strategy that I learned through my experience in home shopping that will help you really rock your holidays. I mean, I got a question for you. Do you know, do you have any plan on when your holiday events are going to be, whether they're virtual live? Have you considered what kind of specials you're going to be offering? Do you know what kind of promotions and things you're going to be putting on social media? Are you listening to me going, oh crap, crap, <laughs> crap. That's a word now. If you said no to any of those things, then yes, you actually do need to, to jump into one of these amazing sessions and learn and get, not only learn, Learning can be boring, I guess. The word learn sounds boring, but you are going to get what you need, the tools you need to be that CEO that I know you are. The worst thing you can do for your holiday season is just wait and wait for your, your network marketing company to give you the promotion or to give you, or we're going to do this event. That's too late. I say it again, it is too late. And so I want to empower you and give you the tools that you need to make sure you're rocking it. Now, when you join, um, and when you're, what you're going to find when you join the Slayer Sales is not only are you going to get the strategy and the blueprint, but you're also going to get a tracker that's going to help you be really aware of how you're doing on all things during the holiday season. Because the holiday season not only sets you up for success right then, right? It's your sales, but it also sets you up for success for the next year, for the new year. Your, if you don't have a plan for exactly how you're going to get your product onto or into as many hands as possible, then you need to join us. Now, here's the great thing. When you join, not only, like I said, are you going to get that tracker, but you're also going to get a holiday gift guide template so that if you want to create a guide, you don't have to worry about all the design work. We've done it for you. Just plug and play your goodies in there and you're good to go. And you also get access to all the sessions. So I will be doing them live starting now all the way through October. I don't think you should wait till October. No, 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 that's too late. But you will have access to come and come back for more if you like when you join um, the Slayer Sales. So for more information, just simply go to socialstoriesmembership.com forward slash holiday. Can't wait to see you there. Happy holidays. So here's the thing. <laughs> we are diving in today to those moments. And we've all had them, right? We have those moments in our business where we feel like, okay, I'm going to be coachable. I'm doing all the things. And the things are Roxanne, they ain't a working. Zoinks. What do we do now? What do you do when nothing seems to be working? I remember those times. And, you know, for me, those times would typically come when I had an amazing high where, uh, you know, I'm recruiting like a rock or sales are going and then nothing. One of my mentors always said, what got you here won't get you there. And so when you listen to what we're going to talk about today, I want you to remember that what got you here will not get you there. Now, here's the thing. You might be saying that's a weird statement because 
I got somewhere with it. Yeah, you did. It's just like when you start network marketing and you're told like, get your list of hundred, get your list of 200 and start reaching out to your closest family and friends when you and I both know that you, there's no way to have 200 close family and friends, but that's fine. And you do it and you will get sales. I know you'll get sales. You'll even get business partners. I know that to be true. But then it slows down and it wanes. And what you don't realize is while that's happening, you're turning away people and people are seeing you as, oh my gosh, she just needs another favor or she seems desperate or eh, this is, they are not taking you seriously as a business person. In fact, there comes a time where that list of 200, or that list of 100 will let you down. And I actually applaud that time because that's the time when you start hopefully looking in inwardly and say, what can I do differently? Now, I want you to know that this podcast is not about those of you who are on the Titanic. <laughs> I said it. Seriously, this is not about those of you who are in a, in a situation, whether it be because it's just really not the right fit for you or that the company is not all that's cracked up to be, or maybe it's on its downturn. This is not what that's about because that's an that is a different reason why you are not seeing the success you want to see, right? That's a completely different reason. I am not a believer staying on the Titanic. It's a great, Titanic was probably a wonderful ship when it was working and didn't have a big gaping hole in an iceberg straight ahead. Iceberg. But once that happened, I am not, a, I love symphony music. I love orchestral music, but I'm not a believer of sitting there watching and listening to the music while the ship is sinking. So for those of you who you're there, you think you might be, you know what to do, go get a lifeboat and move on. But for those of you who are not in a situation like that, and yet you're getting this moment where you're just, the struggle is real. What do you do? Well, first and foremost, and let me just remind you that this is all based on what I've done and what I coach my clients to do and how they've gotten past these moments. And honestly, why a lot of people find me. The biggest thing you have got to do is take that moment, that moment you have right there, and decide that perhaps there's another perspective out there. Decide and realize that what got you here won't get you there. And that comes in different spaces and places. But let me start by saying this to you. When we join network marketing, we are basically told, or we are outright told, you don't need anything else. All you need is what we give you and just follow what we're doing and be coachable. And that's going to get you to the promised land, right? Been there, heard that, said it perhaps, but that may not exactly be true. It may not. And when you find that you're doing all the things and they're not working, that's a time to step back and ask yourself, is there a better way? And if so, is that better way the way that I need to be going? So here's some things to consider when you're doing that. First of all, I think it's important to decide you're going to get out of your own way. Seriously, like when you say there might be a better way, what you're saying is I'm going to get out of my own way. I'm going to say, Roxanne, what I've known so far may or may not be working, isn't working. So it's time for me to get out of my own way with my preconceived notions and my this and that and open be open to things, right? The next thing you got to think about is this, all right? You, in order to get help, which I do think you, that's, that's, that's the next step, right? Is getting help. But we can't even talk about getting help until we realize and believe we're worthy of getting that help. Now you're probably going worthy. What do you mean by that, Roxanne? This is what I mean. There's some, because we're in a paradigm where we're told that you don't need anything else, but what your network marketing company gives you, we really think that that's it. It's all in a box. I thought that, I thought that's all I needed. But as I, I was doing very well and I was, I had the opportunity to be in circles and, and conversations and places and spaces and, and, and trips with people who were further along than I was. And I discovered something very, very interesting. They all had coaches. They all had coaches. And by the way, they all had virtual assistants as well too, but they all had coaches. They all were getting some type of coaching that was not through the company that was helping them get to the next height and the next height and the next height. Now, sure, they didn't talk about that with everyone else, but that's what they were doing. So they were sitting there telling us, you don't need anything else. And yet they were getting help themselves. And then the idea came about, or the 
the notion when I asked about it and when others asked about it, oh, once you get to X level, then you're ready to get coached. Then once you've proven you're at this point, then it's time. Once you have a team this big or you have sales that large and all these things. And can I just stop you? I was like, okay. But then I thought to myself, that makes absolutely zero zilt, not a butt kiss sense. Hear me out. When I was young, when I was a young warthog, I was a competitive swimmer, right? Six, six years old, competitive. I was on the summer team at first and um, did really well and learned that there was a, you could be on a competitive team with a coach. Now, hear me out. By doing very well when you're six, it means that you could swim and you enjoyed it. So let's not, like, I wasn't Michael Phelps although, or Janet Evans. but in order to even see if I could be Janet Evans or Michael Phelps, which obviously I'm not because you know me from that, not here, I needed coaching. No one said, oh, wait, you have to wait till you become an Olympian and then you get a coach. That doesn't make sense, right? As a six-year-old who just flailed around and did some, some strokes, I got a coach. One would say, you're not ready. That's normal. When I was in speech and debate, believe it or not, I was in speech and debate. In high school, um, I remember Andrew Mar- Marconi, Annie and Marconi and I, we um, were partners uh, in debate and we, we were enjoying it. We did all right. And at some point we found out there's something called debate camp. What's that? Okay, we'll try that. She and I flew, we, we applied and flew all the way out to Michigan from Arizona to be at the University of Michigan's Mindy is what they call it, Michigan National Debate Institute. And we we're there for, I don't know, it's like a month or six weeks or whatever. And our eyes were like, whew, learning from the best of the best, from coaches from all around the country that come to coach at Mindy. Um, being around these debate, these debaters that were well beyond our years, it just was amazing. And you better believe we took all that we learned there and we rocked it and started making state and all the things and, and finals all the time in speech and debate because of that experience. We didn't have to wait to win state, to then get a coach. So why is it that we think in network marketing, we we have to? Interestingly enough, over the last few months, now you guys know I have and love my two memberships um, and that's what I usually typically talk about. But you may also know that I do one-on-one coaching and I do one-on-one coaching inside my memberships, but then I do like full-on more more, uh, frequent one-on-one coaching. I don't talk about it much. It's something that I do. But what's interesting is that over the last three months, I have been approached by more network marketers about my coaching than ever before. These are not people who are at the top. It's people who are of a focus. They know what they want to achieve and where they want to go, and they want my help in doing it. And what's interesting about that is all of them came to me for two, one or two different reasons. One is they were, they've been at the point banging their head against the wall over and over again, and they're like, fine, I need to try something new. I've been listening to Roxanne's podcast. Let me try this. Or they have some type of corporate background. Because in the corporate world, we understand that coaching is a thing that you do. That is something that is understandable. It doesn't mean that your company is bad. It's that you know that getting someone who is like literally customizing things to you and is helping you out directly can make you go in destinations unknown. We understand personal development. But for some reason, when we join that network marketing company, they never talk, oh, you don't need to do anything else, just what we do. So when you get out of your own way, perhaps you are ready to say you are ready for help. You do not have to get to a certain level to get to help. You have to have a wanting and willingness to learn, to be challenged, to be held accountable, and to have some type of focus or goal. That's all. I mean, I coach people who are all about growing huge teams. I coach people who are all about wanting the sales. And I coach people who are in between. But what they have in common is those things that I listed off, that willingness that 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 sets you apart. But also realizing that they are worthy of coaching. Now, some of them come in and say, can I, is, is that good for me? Like, am I worthy of coaching? You're worthy of coaching. If you're sitting there trying to do the same thing over and over and it's not working, then it's time to try something new. And for some, it is like, let me do like a social stories membership and I get it there and awesome. But for some, it means taking another step. Now, I'll say this. If you're doing some on, on-demand program and you're realizing that you still need more, you probably need coaching. I'm going to say it. 
I know. And I don't usually talk about coaching and I limit the amount of people I coach because I get in it. Like I am so into there. Like I just, I'm personally invested in so many ways. So I do take on clients, but I'm very particular because their, their success is like my, like I'm in it, but it's something to really consider. Wouldn't you say? So once we've gotten past, and if we've gone past the fact that yes, you at whatever stage you're at, Yes, you are worthy of getting more help. You're worthy, whether that's, like I said, joining a membership or getting coaching, you are worthy of that. Don't think that you can't invest in yourself in that way. And don't think you have to have make, make a certain amount of money to get there. I mean, lifetime learning is a thing, is a phrase because it's a thing. And the personal development you can get from that is huge. And it everything you do in life prepares you for what you can do in the future. My dad has said it to me for years and I believe it. And I know it to be true. And so as you do dive in and, and realize, let me get out of my own way and there might be another way to look at things, all of a sudden, you know what happens? That wall you're hitting with your business starts to go away. You start to reach new heights. Now, listen, if you have been taught for so long in network marketing that there's only one way and the way is to reach out to all these people and, and lead with the business and everything you do on social media is, is, is about the business then you're probably going to need some help. You are going to plateau. You are turning people off. You know that. I tell you that all the time and it's because it's true. There's no, we don't have to debate whether social media is, is the best way to grow your network marketing business. It is. It's the way before COVID it was, it is right now. I don't need to convince you that Instagram and Facebook are the way to go. But if you're using the, the faulty tactics of just like spamming my business, my business, my business, realize people are seeing you as a glorified salesperson. They're not seeing you as an expert when they have a serious problem that they need solved. They're not seeing you as that person that is going to give them the tools they need to solve their problem. They don't even, they're not even convinced that you realize they really have a problem. They think that you're going for sales over their actual issue. I'm telling you because it's true. Getting past that. And learning how to make a social media funnel, an Instagram or Facebook or both funnel, that leads people into know, liking, and trusting you, that sets you up as an expert. All of these things make all the difference. But if you don't know how to do it, and if you're not being taught that, it's time to find help, which is, it's time to get help. It's time to go out there and get the skills that you need to get. Wouldn't you agree? Now, the other thing I think is important. So you're going to evaluate. First of all, you're like, I'm going to get out of my head. I'm going to realize that there's more, realize that maybe I don't know everything. I'm going to realize that if that means me getting help, I don't have to wait to get to a certain level. I'm ready. Let's do this. The fact that I'm annoyed with the fact that I'm not getting better, that my business is not growing is reason enough to move forward. But there's another element of it. And the other element of that is this, okay? (sighs) It's the mental part of it. It is. It's the mental part of it that helps us get beyond it. Because here's the thing. Okay, go with me here. When you stop getting sales and when you when your team isn't building, or maybe your people are leaving your team or whatever, how does that make you feel? Does it make you feel frustrated? Are you when you get overwhelmed, when you're trying, do you are you the person who starts to work more and do all the things, or do you kind of curl up in a ball and do nothing? I'm a work more type of person, but that doesn't always mean it gets to me where I want to go, right? It can be very frustrating. But how does that make you feel? Do you feel like there's something wrong with you? Do you feel like maybe you're not doing it right? See, as you know, I am big on lifetime learning and I'm not only in a mastermind for memberships, but I also have a coach, a business coach. It was interesting because I was doing a two day um, training with my coach and he was telling us, and we're going through this, and he said something that I thought was so, it struck me, struck me big time. He was talking about how most, and and understand in this group of coaching, there are people that are like eight figures, seven figures, all those things. We're talking about our launch, like when you kick off your business. And the norm is that you may make nothing. No one may buy your things. That's the way it goes. It was, it was hearing him say that, I was like, oh, that's refreshing. And I thought back to when I launched, go with me, will you? A little over two years ago. First thing I launched when I knew that this is what I wanted to do to work with network marketers, it created a, 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 a course I was really proud of called 
Instagram for network marketers. And I initially passed it on to some network marketers that I really respected and said, will you like, will you please go through this? Will you please give me feedback? And if you feel like you want to, will you also please um, give me a testimonial? Well, and you can see when I gave it to him, I could see none of them actually did. They said, yeah, yeah, yeah. None of them actually did it. Sidebar. Okay. But I, I moved forward with it and I launched it. Here it is. Ta-da. And crickets. So many crickets, so much silence. Nobody, came, no one bought it. No one bought it. No one bought it. And then one day I got the update. Boom. You have a sale. I was so excited. I'm like, let me see who is this exciting network marketer who bought it. You know who it was? <laughs> it was my mom. My mom did the sympathy purchase for me. My mom, who ate my chocolate chip cookies with that had eggshells in it when I was little, was the one who bought it. Love her for that. She's not a network marketer. She bought it because she's my mom. And I love her for that. But to hear my coach talk about the, the sympathy buy that he experienced and that that's typically how it works in business. And to say that freely and for everyone to be like, yep, yep, that's expected. It told me a couple of things. First of all, can you imagine if when only my mom bought my very first course, if I said, forget it, I'm not doing it, where would we be? Two years and some change later, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. I wouldn't have two robust, amazing memberships, social stories membership, which shows you exactly how to build out your Instagram and Facebook funnels so that you can grow your business and so you can grow your team and your sales without actually having to bother your family and friends and spam everyone. That wouldn't be a thing. It wouldn't exist. I wouldn't have hundreds of members who are kicking booty and growing their network marketing businesses. Also wouldn't have Social Templates Club. Man, that just started what, two months ago. So exciting. The, the opportunity for network marketers to get the tools they need to really create a content, like to do 30 days of content, bam, and to have things like carousel templates, which are so important right now on Instagram, but so hard to make, made for them. They just boom, bada boom, bada boom. That that's means customized and are good to go. I wouldn't see the amazing results that they're already having. We're a month old, literally, as we record this, tomorrow is a month. And, and seeing the results that they're getting, the sales. I mean, shout out to Megan D, who, who recently was like, I'm three weeks in. I've got my 30-day plan, bada bing. And I got, my, my, I got a preferred customer off of my post, which was exciting for her because she hadn't gotten a preferred customer. That's what her company calls them a new one in a long time and boom from doing that. Now, listen, when, when people have results like that, and you've heard the different social stories members on, on the podcast, when you hear about their results, that makes me like, I feel fulfilled. I feel like I'm helping you because I am really reach your goals and I'm helping the network marketing industry not be so spammy, not get such a bad rap for being sleazy because we're not. Had I quit at that moment, when the only purchase I got on that course was my mom wouldn't be here. Why do I tell you that? Because A, I don't want you to feel like just because your, your business has gotten stagnant that it's time to pack it up or that you are doing something wrong or it's not for you. And the other thing I, I want to remind you is this. If you think about how we start in network marketing, we kind of start with some false advertising. I said it. I said what I said. Why did I say that? Because think about it. I remember when I started, you might remember when you start, started or when you are onboarding a new member, a new team member, you let, let them know about the launch. They're going to do their, their launch, whatever you call it, right? And you tell them to invite all these people and it's going to be great and all the things. And if we're being honest with them, we should probably tell them from the get-go, you may not get any sales. Kind of like my coach said, like, listen, your launch, it may not happen. You may not get any sales or your sales might only come from your best friends, best, you know, or your, your best friend from the time you were five or your mom. Can you imagine if we were honest about that from the get-go? If we set the expectations up, so that is what is expected. You may do it and no one may show up even if they've RSVP'd. I want you to imagine that. 
because when we set the expectations up realistically, listen, I'm all positive and, and you know that, but I'm also realistic and you know that too. And I call a spade a spade. If we were honest with network marketers about the fact that when you start your business, you might be starting it to crickets. We wouldn't feel like when nobody shows up that it's a sign that we're not meant for this or everything that our husband or friend said about this is true and about all those fears. We wouldn't have those fears if we knew that that's how you start a business. So when I hear my coach saying that, I'm like, that's so interesting that, that online business people, they understand that, but we don't talk about that as network marketing. And let's, here's, here's how that applies to you right now. It applies to you right now because the truth of the matter is when we start our journey at that point, thinking that our launch should be a certain way and we should get a certain amount of sales and and we hear of the success stories and all the things, we're already setting our mind up that if that doesn't happen, we're failing. So when we get to the point where we have those plateaus and they will happen, and that's when we have to remember what got us here is not going to get us there and let's amp it up a little bit. doesn't matter if you're six months into your business, six weeks or 10 years, these things are going to happen. They seem so monumental and we can't, we can't take our emotions away from them and really look at them and analyze them and evaluate them. Because we've already from the beginning been set up to think that everything we do should equal success. How many of you had a team member that quit? Maybe ghosted you and then she quit. You, I have. How bad did you feel about yourself and about your skills as a team lead? And how embarrassed did you feel like you didn't want people to know? Listen, I'm raising both hands. And if I could raise my feet at the same time too, I'm going to jump. I would. And you know what the biggest aha, like chicanery moment was? When that happened. And then I had uplines and sidelines go, oh, that happened to me. It's okay. Excuse me? That's a thing? You mean this big thing that could make me feel like crappity crap, 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 make me feel like crap with a capital S ends with T was bound to happen as it happened to all of you, but nobody talks about it and sets up the framework. You've got to be joking, but I'm not. And you know, it's true. When we do that, when we're not real with ourselves and others about what this journey is about. And when we get to a point where nothing seems to be working, we feel like we are the problem. Now, we may be the problem in the sense of like, get out of your own way and invest in yourself, invest in learning more, invest in that. Yes, that could be, but it's not that it's on us as in you're a crappy human being. It's not a thing. You're not. But we, or that this is, never going to work for us. Henny penny, the sky is falling. We should never have done this in the first place. So it's not too late to realize that, right? Hopefully you've had these aha moments like, yeah, I wish they had told me that. So they didn't. That's okay. You're going to do better because we know better. We do better. So you're going to make sure that you do better for the people coming on your team, but also you've got to let yourself know it's okay. Because if you sit there in the overwhelm or feeling bad because you think that something's wrong right now, and maybe the thing that's wrong is you and you made the wrong decision to ever do this, you're never going to get further. No, you're never going to get it. Not this time. You're not. But you can if you realize that this is just part of the journey. And as part of the journey, we realize that, acknowledge it, say it out loud. This is part of it. We're going to plateau all right, this plateau is an opportunity for me to to evaluate. But first, I've got to get out of my own way. Realize that I don't have all the answers and what got me here is not going to get me to the next level. It's just not. It's not. Like when Olympians switch their coaches, coaches they've had since they were like, so they get to a point and they realize if you want to get to the Olympics, you're going to have to upgrade. You're going to have to make some changes. Same thing with us. Great. You did the spammy Tammy thing and you got to a certain level and you will. Awesome. Now what? Because that's not going to get you to where you want to go. So let's get it right. So you evaluate. You realize you don't have all the answers. You get out of your own way. You realize that you don't have to wait to get help. 
if you are at a point where it's not where you want it to be, it's time to get help. And then you find whatever, whomever is out there that might be challenging to you. You know, I have a, so right now, um, we're in the throes of it. I am starting a new program. I say new, it's part, it's new in the sense of, um, it's called Social Stories Pro and, and I wasn't going to mention it, but I am now. And it's for those who are really clear on what their goals are. And it's a goal that they want to reach between the end of this year and the beginning of the first quarter of next year. It's for those who are like ready to work. And it's a program where they not only get one-on-one coaching, they're getting laser, like small group pod coaching, as well as accountability. I'm going to be in their business (laughs) for the next six months, helping them get there and beyond. Um, And because it's such a very specific program for people who are, and, and not specific in the goals, like your goal could be, I want to increase my sales. It can be, I want to grow my team, but you just need to, or I want to hit a, a certain title, but you got to know what that goal is and be really clear on it. Um, but because I'm being very specific and particular about it, I'm also having interviews, conversations, whatever you want to call with those who are interested in it. So we get to see if it's a good, good fit. And what's interesting is not only do I hear that, I don't think I'm ready. And I'm like, okay, wait, do you have a goal? Do you want to get there? Are you ready to do the work? Well, then, then, then that's not a question. I'm not looking for what, how much volume do you have? And none of that. Like, do you have the will and the want and the chutzpah to get there? Then let's do this. But what's interesting is I was talking to you and she, actually, she said she listened to the podcast. So shout out to you. I won't say your name, but she, she and I met we we're talking about it. And she's one of those people that I'm like, I see so much in her and I want her to see it in herself. I can't do it for her, but I can coach her up to it. And um, she said to me, she's like, you know, I listened to your podcast. I've listened to it for over a year now and you make me feel uncomfortable. Some of the things you say makes me feel uncomfortable. And I kind of smirked and I, I've been hanging on to that and I love that. I love it. Why do I love that so much? Because I'm making her think. I'm making her really become that CEO. Rather than just listening to what everyone is saying, everyone else is saying, she has to really consider, wait a moment, that sounds a little counterculture. How does that feel? Do I like that? Could that work for me? And I see, I hope she says, I hope she decides to join because, um, you know, I extended the offer to her and I hope she just decides to do it because she's going to be phenomenal. But part of it is that journey. I don't want to be the person that's just like, rah, 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 whatever you say, 100 people, 200 people, reach out to all of them today. No, I've done that. I did it. I did that. I was taught that. Doesn't work. Doesn't make you feel good about life. It wears out and wears off. But I love the fact that I'm able to help you think more, help you become that CEO, help you get to your goals. That makes me so happy. I'm like, yes, you want to be challenged. I'm going to say again, you want to be challenged. Being challenged is a great thing. You take some of the things I say, you might not take it all, but you're being challenged in a great way. So you're going to find that person and maybe that person is me. And if so, let's talk. Maybe it's not. Go find it. But please don't find someone who just says everything you're already doing. Because guess what? What got you where you are, just like my mentor says, is not going to get you where you want to go. So it's time to upgrade. Now it might be that like, you're like, I'm doing these things, but could you go a little deeper with them? Like I see some of my, uh, s- some people who are in social stories and I notice they're in it, but they're not doing any of it. Cause I can see they're not doing any of it. Do I expect social stories to work for someone who they're not doing anything? No. Do I expect people to be in social templates club and get the templates? If they're not using the templates, it's not going to work for them. So it might be that you're like, I see it, I get it, but I'm not implementing it. So maybe that thing for you is Let me, that thing to take you to the next level is actually doing it. Just saying. I'm not saying, but I'm saying. It's time to get out of your own way. And I know, especially with this time of year, with school coming back, maybe you had a holiday, maybe you didn't, maybe you got switched um, with the pandemic and all the things out in the world, there are things that are going to slow you down. It just is the way that it's going to be. And that's okay. You just have to get real with yourself on how to get back into the game. Because if you don't, or if you find that you keep trying and it's not working, then it's time to get into action and do something different. I don't mean get into action. Let me just reach out to 20 people because that'll make me feel better. No, it doesn't work that way. Get into action that's going to get you to the next level. 
All right. We'll be right back with Behind the Scenes. It is the 18th of August when we're recording this, and I just got back from vacation. I have to tell you, when you go on vacation, you, you think that you're going to be back, like, and every, it's, it's, it's taking me a little while. I think because it was, like, Olympics for two weeks and then vacation, which was probably a good way to say goodbye to the Olympics, but now I'm just trying to get back into the swing of things. I am getting back in the swing. It's not trying. We don't say that word. I am getting back in the swing of things and making it happen, um, but vacation was great. We were supposed to go to Puerto Vallarta, um, but Mexico's basically shut down because of the pandemic. So we ended up going to San Diego. There were great highlights. So I got to tell you, we, um, we went on a train, which I've done the train down to San Diego before, but Scott has never done it. And he was like, why have I never done this? This is amazing. We did still get to see my family and we saw Scott's daughter and we had a great time. And Baylor got to come with us because we stayed in Cali. So that was all a benefit. I'm getting on a plane tomorrow. <laughs> Scott just walked in and out <laughs> and I said, I'm getting on a plane to Ramara. And he said, he goes, yes, rude. Anyway. Um, anyway, I'm going on a plane. I'm meeting up with my sisters or sister. I don't know how many just yet. We're going to Vegas. <laughs> Why are we going to Vegas? You ask? Because, um, there is a mashup of our favorite bands in sync. Hello. We've got Joey Fatone. Nick Carter, AJ McLean, those two are from Backstreet. And then um, Juan A. Morris, who is from back from um, Boyz Men. They are doing like a mashup 90s, 90s, 2000s boy band. And oh, can't wait. So they op- only like for a week, no, four days. We're going to opening night tomorrow. So I'm flying out tomorrow morning. We're going to go and then we're going to come back. And I'll be back on the swing things, but I cannot wait. I'm so excited. That's going to be good fun. Um, and then I think I told you a while back about Richard Marks. That's this Sunday. How is it that, I mean, listen, you're like, gosh, Roxanne, you just sing it up. Yes. I'm going back to the eighties with my Richard Marks. Scott and I are going on Sunday. So that's what I have like, um, going on fun wise. I do want to, I always tell you about my business because I think it's important for you to, to give, get little tidbits and information. It's always good to get that. Um, so I made a big decision at the end of last month. Something that I actually, if I look back on, right, had been planning and in the throes of figuring it all out back in February. If you want to read a book, you can read Rocket Fuel. Um, I got an integrator, which will make sense there. Integrator is someone who comes into a business, like you've got me who's just like, and you know, I like, I'm just la 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 la, right? Integrator is someone who's like, here's our standard operating procedure. Here, Here's how all of these things work. All the things I don't like to do that don't give me life. And sure, I can do them. I'm educated. I've learned how to do that. But I don't, that's not my strong suit or my happy suit. She's going to do. I'm so excited about that. And I have to tell you, to come back from vacation and my first meeting on this week on Monday was with her. I was so excited about it. Like I got put on makeup. I was like, I got dressed up because I just could feel the weight coming off. Now, weight is not a negative thing often, right? It just, those tasks that don't give me extra life and joy, being done by someone who does enjoy that is so, so very awesome. So I'm excited. Her name's Taryn. Um, She, and we've worked together before in different iterations. So now I'm so glad. And the irony of it is back in the first quarter, when I was looking at, you know, reading the book, Rocket Fuel and in my mastermind and um, coaching and my uh, cohorts, like that's been a big topic of when do you get an integrator and how do you know and all the things. And so it's been things I've been mar- marinating over. I thought, I know it's going to happen in the future, but not right now. Um, but if I did, she'd be who I'd want. And we had a quick discussion and it just, it all lined up. So I'm very excited. And really when I say the things I don't like to do, let me just like make that make sense a little bit more too. I have an amazing team of people who work to make this all happen. You know that even podcast, if I haven't shouted to their names recently, love me some Gerald who does the video portion of the podcast and all the videos you see promoting the podcast. Love me some James who does the, like the actual audio podcast. Um, I know, and they're excellent at what they do. If there's anything that causes them grief, not that they ever complain about it. It's me. (laughs) It's me because I'm the bottleneck because them getting what they need to do what they need to do in the manner they need to do 
is all dependent on Roxanne, who's like, ooh, ooh, I want to do a podcast. Now I'm going to do a video. Like, I love all those things. The, 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 the tasks of making sure they get it and when they get it, that's not me. Now we have someone who it is. So I'm very, very excited about that. And maybe that gets you thinking about your business. Um, and you might be saying, I'm not there yet. You may not be there yet, but you will be there soon. You will. I didn't think that I was, I was worthy or ready to get a virtual assistant a year ago, but I said, okay, I'm going to do it. Now the team has grown because you got to think big and believe and know that you're going to grow into it. I didn't do it all then, but I grew into it and you're going to grow into it as well too. All right. That's all I have for you today. You guys rock the Casbah. I haven't told you that recently. You rock the Casbah. Um, I can't wait to see you next week, but here's the thing. If there's anything that just like got you going thoughts, whatever it may be about this podcast this week, please don't hesitate to hop on over to rocks talks on Instagram and DM me. Um, love for you to show you're watching it, but also if you're like, Roxanne, I didn't like this or I love this. Let's talk about it. It's a dialogue. You're a CEO. I'm a CEO. We can have CEO conversations. Um, no glorified salespeople here. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for listening to Rocks Talks and can't wait to see you next week for another episode. You're not ahead. You're not behind. You are exactly where you're supposed to be. Even if it's on a plateau that's giving you a little strife. There's something to be learned there. So let's grow. Get where you need to go so you can grow. All right. You guys take care. Bye now.